Hello, welcome to Drinks with MJ. I am joined by, I'm so excited for this Zoom, I'm going to have a swig of my drink. I am joined by my friend, my soul sister, just my soul companion. It's DJ Bunny Not Bunny. Hello. Hey. All right. I'm so excited to have you on. Oh, it is so good to see your face. I wish we could do this face to face, but we're hundreds of miles apart at the moment. I know. Well, what, what are you drinking tonight? Um, Corona. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Crack it open then, you know, you know what to do. Oh, I sure do. Noise. I love this noise. Oh. Did you get a open opener? There we go, done. Yeah. Cheers, thank you for coming on Drinks with MJ. Woo. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So how has everything been then? Because you've been DJing for like 20 odd years. How did you get, how did you get into DJing? Um, do you know, yeah, I have been DJing a long time. I've been in my job a long time. Um, but I kind of changed it up about three years ago. Um, and I got into it because um, I grew up in a nightclub. My parents owned a nightclub um, from way before I was born. So I was literally in a cot, in a baby carrier, underneath the decks, in a nightclub um, for my childhood. And then as a younger child and a teenager, I, um, I embraced it. And I wanted to be part of everything that happened there, from sorting out the bottle orders to DJing to the new lights like everything I lived and breathed it um and every part of it not just like the glamorous bits that you see now on Instagram obviously we didn't have social media then but everything everything that was involved I wanted to do like at 12 year old I'd go in on a Saturday morning and want to help clean um from the Friday night or I'd want to go and help out in the cloakroom or I'd want to be DJing I just wanted to be in that atmosphere and um it it was amazing I didn't do too well in my GCSEs because I was preoccupied with that lifestyle um but I knew that that was all I wanted I knew I knew and I've always known and um it's changed I've had kind of different career paths through that industry my whole life um but I'm 38 soon and um yeah and at the moment it seems to be going okay. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you actually, so you grew up in the nightclub. What was it mm -hmm. that made you have that transition of thinking, I actually really want to, I want to play these clubs. Like you grew up in it and you've been there, you, you probably walk around with all kinds on the floor and stuff. But what made you actually yeah. go, I want to actually be playing and up front and centre? So my parents sold the nightclub to a big um, like national company. Yeah. And my dad broke my heart because he didn't tell me that this deal was going on. He just told me about five o'clock in the morning, I was sat on the bar in the club after everyone had gone home and he sat there and said, this is it. This was the last night I've sold it. And honestly, like I felt like my heart had been ripped out. I was so upset um and really emotional even now I feel emotional about that conversation because it really affected me but what it did do was make me fight to still be part of that um and I very quickly decided that I wanted to DJ and I started because at this time I was still at school so I was probably 15 approaching 16 and I decided I wanted to DJ and that was all I wanted to do, was just play music and dance and enjoy it. And I went to a club that was local to us. And um, they knew, obviously, my parents they knew the club that was our business had been sold. And I asked them to give me a chance. And they did. And I was there a few weeks. Um, and I always remember my first kind of set and things. And from that, it grew because my confidence grew. And, um, you know, I probably wasn't very good. In fact, I definitely wasn't very good at actually DJing at that point. But there was nobody in the room that loved it as much as I did. And I, um, I grew in confidence. I grew in, like, myself really quickly as a young girl. 
And before I finished school, before I sat my DJ, my GCSEs, I was then DJing um, three nights a week, four nights a week in over 18 bars and nightclubs and pubs and everywhere. And now I look back and think, you know, that was a, a big thing for a young girl to do. I don't know that I would have, I would be nervous if that was one of my daughters doing it. Um, but yeah, I, I done that and I done that um, for a long time really before I decided, well, I felt like a long time at the time, before I decided to take those skills and move abroad. And I moved abroad by myself when I was 18. <laughs> I traveled, I played music, I literally danced my way through my life in loads of different countries. And um, I just embraced how happy I was doing it. And that's what got me the gigs, you know, I was always on time. I always put in maximum effort and I always played the music that people wanted to hear. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if I started when I was 15 and I'm nearly 38, that's um, quite, quite a stint. Yeah, you do, you've done well, you've earned your keep. So did you like learn <laughs> yourself then? Or did you, I don't want to say train, but like, did you just literally from what you saw, just clock it up in your own head and go, okay, so this is how you do it. And that's what you do and learn off people when you're growing up, learn off DJs. Do you know, so um, my dad was a DJ and right. he taught me the best. Um, I mean, I don't want to get the technicalities of it because it's boring if you're not a DJ, but um, he basically taught me how to press play, how to press pause, um, explain, <laughs> explain to me how to load music up um, and use volume. Um, and that was how I started. And I, I played my first gig only knowing that and just choosing the music that I thought would work and using the most basic set of skills you could imagine um but it was okay it worked and I was very fortunate then that along the way there were other DJs that um helped and supported me and you know I got on with a lot of other people and a lot of other DJs and um yeah, and, and it just all grew from there. But from there, it's self-taught and it is still self-taught. You know, funny enough, at 15 year old, um, when I was doing that, like I never questioned my ability. But now, now I'm obviously better than when I, technically better than what I was then. But now I question everything. I go and do a gig and I come home and I listen to what I played and I can hear mistakes or I know it instantly if, I, if I've not done it right um, but I never had that feeling as a 15 year old but now I'm better and now I'm so much more critical and I feel like there's so much more room to improve all the time oh, always I always watch always I've ever done and I'm like okay next time we will do this or I wouldn't have done yeah. that or but it's just about being authentic, being true, owning who you are, and your authentic self-taught journey. It can't be bought. I no, and, and I, you know, the, the way I enjoy learning is by watching other people that are better. You know, I watch other DJs that are incredible, and I sit there, and there's no um, jealousy or nothing like that. I literally watch them play and think, that's incredible. Yeah. Now, how do I how do I make that happen for me, or how do I bring that to my game and my way? Um, and you're always learning. I'll never be the best DJ in the world. Um, uh, that I don't even feel incredibly good at the moment, anyway, about DJing. You know, I don't feel like I'm technically great. There's a lot of people that are incredible DJs out there, but um, I'm always learning. And there isn't a day that goes past where I'm not doing something. So. Um, I'm just grateful for the journey and grateful incredibly after the last two years that I'm still fully booked and people still want me to play music. Do you know what that means? That's a cheers to that, baby. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Cheers, a virtual cheers, absolutely. Your life really is fascinating. So you've we met on a little TV show that we'll talk about later on, but your mm -hmm. weight loss it's crazy you look like a completely different lady like oh my gosh gotta yeah. go straight into it how did you get to where you was with your waist so I've always been like 
an eight or a 10 normally growing up because I'm an active person, but I never really had to think about it. I just ate whatever I wanted and I was active. So it didn't matter about being fat or thin or putting weight on or losing it because I never really changed. Yeah. And then I got pregnant twice really quickly when I was 30 years old. So I had my first daughter at 30 and my second one at 31. And um, I don't actually fully know, and this is the truth, how heavy I got. I just know the last time I weighed myself, I had gone up to 16 and a half stone. Um, and that wasn't at my biggest. Um, I could guess that I was around 17 stone by the time I was at my heaviest. Um, but I, I don't know exactly how heavy I was. I just know the heaviest, the heaviest weigh-in I had was 16 and a half stone. Now that's a lot. That is a huge amount of weight. Um, and it came from um overeating yes. it's just the easiest way to say it. i over i ate too many calories and i didn't move enough yeah. and um i got really fat <laughs> it's crazy though isn't it it's just it's it's mm -hmm. just like when you slip your eye off the ball it's mad what can happen like we're, we're both similar with our weight loss journeys like the size we got to and dropping our eyes off the ball so what was the turn and what was the darkest moment of your weight loss then that made you go nah I need to get my head in the game and sort myself out what was the moment for you well I it was a lot of things um really that combined to one catalyst I guess I I was overweight and I was unhappy um and I had been DJing because it pays the bills but I wasn't DJing anymore because I enjoyed it. I was I was DJing because I got paid good money and it paid bills. And that's not what I'm about. Um, and I used to go and DJ on Friday and Saturday nights and literally be like dragging myself there because my confidence would be rock bottom. Yeah. I'd feel completely rubbish about myself. And standing in front of people when you're DJing and feeling like that is really hard. It's harder anyway because people are critical in this world um when you work in the music industry but when you work in the music industry and people are critical and you've changed so much with your appearance you know you've gone from being uh, average normal weight to being obese um people talk about it they do um particularly other women and other girls and I felt really bad about myself and there was one night I was DJing um for a corporate event and um I think there must have been about 200 people there, maybe 300, that sort of number. And um, I used to go there early to check if it was okay. Um, and I went there early to check if it was okay. And I went into the bathroom and it's this beautiful bathroom in a hotel. And it's like four or five cubicles in a row. And I went and sat in the cubicle um, and I was literally like just sat not even on the toilet for any reason, just sat there thinking, oh my God, I've got to do this again for like the next three hours. And I had some girls outside the cubicle who knew me um, and they basically were having a conversation about, have you seen the state of Bonnie? She's put on so much weight. And I literally, I already felt bad that night, but knowing that I was then going out to DJ um, and face people talking like that was really hard. And I remember opening the door to the cubicle and opposite the door to the cubicle was like a full length mirror because it's, you know, one of those posh hotels. And I waited for them to obviously leave and I just literally looked in the mirror and I never hated myself more. Like I would have done anything just to have walked out that gig last night that night sorry not last night that night um but I didn't I went and done it and I went to bed and um I just felt pretty rough about myself and I decided I needed to change it and um the one thing that I have got in my favor which isn't always a good thing um but I do have a really kind of addictive personality and I've learned as I've got older to put that towards positive good things um so you know, it works because I like exercising now, so I'm on it, or like I like practicing DJing, so I'm on it. And at that point, I was like, that switch went, and I was like, 
okay, like let's change this. And it was never about losing weight because of what other people thought. Yeah. Um, it was about losing weight to find myself again because I felt pretty broken at that point. Yeah, I can totally relate to what you're saying. Totally relate to losing your identity as well and losing yourself. You've done incredible yeah. and so well that you ended up on a TV show as a weight loss hero, mentor, coach. Like that's a home <laughs> run. That you should be so proud of that. How did so? Let's cheers to that actually, because that's a massive moment for the both of us. Lose weight like me. How we met. What an amazing uh-huh. experience. Like how did you, how did you? get approached for the show tell me all about it god you know it feels like ages ago now um it does. so you'll have to correct me if i'm, in, if I'm wrong on any of this because my memory might not be completely correct but um i was approached because i've been featured in newspapers about my weight loss story from when i was on take me out they saw a press article from take me out okay. and um they contacted me like the producers that were working with channel four and asked me if i'd be interested in doing the show um and they sent me the information we chatted we zoomed we went through it all and then um i agreed and they agreed and it it kind of went from there and little did i know i was going to find you i know we found each other it was such an amazing experience like when i think back like four years ago where I was in my life with me being addicted to sugar and then being on national TV advocating the sugar-free lifestyle. It was just like, oh, it was like, honestly, it was a full circle moment. I don't know, did you feel like that as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I find it hard to live in the moment because I find it hard to accept praise um, because I don't feel like that about myself. When people say, oh my God, you've done amazing that you've um, lost weight or you've done so well with your DJ and whatever, I find it hard to, you know, accept that praise because it doesn't feel like I've done that well to me. Um, but it was incredible. And um, I think it's just kind of an eye opener um, when other people recognize something that you've achieved especially when you didn't do it for anyone else I literally just done it for myself yeah take me out honestly I need to watch you on take me out how did you (laughs) how did you get on being on take me out like (laughs) no um do you know take me out was in 2017 and it still haunts me to this day um what was it like take me look Look, Take Me Out was great fun. It was like being on a massive hen party with Paddy McGuinness. It was incredible. Um, I didn't get a date, and I've not had a date since, so I think I have the Take Me Out curse. But, um, yeah, it was a similar sort of thing, um, although we did have to have a face-to-face audition, and um, they they gave me the job, and I went on and um, had the best time, but didn't get a date and like I said have been single I love that whole single. experience though like being on the show every single weekend I think it was on what was it yeah like? so we felt and what was it what was it how did you feel like how did it affect the, your life we had a six episode series I think um but we filmed it over 10 days so it's filmed one show a day over 10 days and it's like a 12 hour day of filming um because of hair and makeup and all the edits and all the stuff you don't see the stuff you don't see on take me out is the best stuff it's the only thing I would say there was so much stuff that was to me so much more entertaining and fun but um for whatever reason it doesn't make the cut maybe it's a bit close to the edge um but um yeah it's the the whole the whole like what you see as six weekends is actually filmed in 10 days wow so you, yeah because I remember watching it back in the day thinking there was someone on there that was on it every single week and I was thinking oh my god like you've been on there no like, yeah it's Hi. all filmed so you um you stay in this big hotel um with all the other girls and all the lads stay in one hotel and then um, you just get looked after and every morning you get hidden and put into this massive coach and drove to, it was at Maidstone Studios when I'd done it, 
drove to the studios, like ushered in because no one was allowed to know you're on Take Me Out. And um, then you had like two different areas of filming where the girls and the boys were. So we never met the boys. And, um, and then we filmed it and it was great. And it was like a really lovely, fun experience. Yeah. I mean, you know. What made you go on it? Um, I just thought it'd be fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about having fun. I'll yes, do anything. Yes, that, baby. Woo. <laughs> I'll do that. She's enough on the show. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll you just thought. I'll be in a minute. Great and good. I That's just thought. <laughs> no, I've literally got a three drink limit and then I'm an animal. Um, I, I just thought it'd be good fun. I just thought it'd be good fun. And I'm always up for having a laugh, being fun and doing spontaneous things. You know, nothing surprises my parents. I told them I wanted to move abroad. Within 10 days, I was living in Magaluf. You know, I, I Love I'm very, I'm, I just like, I just think life's too short. I'll do anything if I if I'm, think I'm going to enjoy it. Um, and yeah, and I don't regret it. Even for all the negative press I got, don't regret it. It's press. You know, <laughs> let's be real. So what is next for you then? I know you've just had a fantastic holiday, but what is next mm -hmm. in musical terms, in your personal life, and your love life? You might want to have a little swig before you answer that, but what is next for you both? <laughs> hang on, hang on. We've both done that at the same time. <laughs> no, it tastes too good. I've got more in the fridge. Good, that's what we like. So, <laughs> what is next? So, what's next? Okay, so here's what's next. Um. I've got a TV show coming out on BBC Three where I say I, like I'm in charge of the show, absolutely not. I, like always, I'm a very small cog in a big machine. Um, I was a DJ for a BBC show um, that is airing, I believe, this month, but I can't talk too much about it, but I DJed some really cool pies and they were filmed and they're going to be on the BBC. So that's um, something to look forward to. Um, I've got a new single coming out, but it's still in the kind of tweaking stages, I would say. It's not been mastered yet, but it is due out, um, which is lovely and exciting. And then, you know, I'm really blessed. I've got full time DJ work and I'm on the radio and I'm working at events and working at festivals um, and I'm, you know, I'm living the dream. But. The dream's always bigger. There's always bigger stages. There's always bigger events. Um, and yeah, I guess the next stage is to kind of up that. And that's um, that's what the goal is at the moment is to is to get those bigger events. Um, and hopefully with a bit of hard work, it will keep doing what come you're off. doing. Yeah. Keep doing what you do. She's drunk. I've got a drunk. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> I am such a drunken liability, honestly. <laughs> the show is not to blame. What would you tell your younger self 20 years ago if you knew what you knew now, baby? There is more life. No, hang on, let me rephrase that. There is more time than life. Um, my biggest regret is that I feel like I wasted time and I know we all make mistakes, um, we're only human, but I still live through those mistakes every day and I'm still trying to rectify those. And I just wish that I realized a lot sooner how precious time is because there's a lot of it that I feel that I wasted and um, I really wish that there was some mistakes that I could take back but I can't, um, so I'm just fighting my way through, trying to fix those and um, make my family proud. And, um, you know, hopefully that will happen. And um, that's, that's it, really. That's all I can say. That is amazing. Well, you're definitely making your family proud. I can't wait to hear, when's the new single out? I don't know yet. Maybe oh. next month. Okay, next month. I'm so excited. And you know what? It's so good to catch up as well. It's so good to see you. Honestly, I so wish, I so wish 
that we could do this face to face. But I think I think I'm going to be up your way June the ninth for like four days. So hopefully we'll be able to catch up in person. Yeah, well we can do this in person as well on the on the Instagram. Yeah. Who knows? Bonnie, thank you so much for coming on drinks with MJ. It's been an absolute thank you. joy. I've been so excited all week when you were coming on. I was like, yes, we're having a drink together. Thank you so, so much. Cheers, my love. Cheers, thank you. Thank you for having me. I love you so much. You're doing so well. Thank you. It's an absolute honour to be on your show. Thank you. I love being, honestly, I've been excited all week. Thank you. And I will see you soon. Thank you. Down it. Down it. (laughs) I've not got much left. Down in one.